Hey y'all, what's up? I got my dog Shelby with me today. I had to go meet my dad and drop off his keys because I had picked him up yesterday and he left his keys in my car. So I met with him today so he could get his keys. But there's just been a lot of stuff going on in my own personal life and I know I haven't made a video in a couple of days. But I will say, um, Landon still needs a lot of prayers. He, he just seems to be getting worse. That poor boy. His mama said, if you do anything for me, please just keep asking people to pray. I need all the prayers that I can get right now. And I'm like, okay. I will do what I can to get you as many prayers as you can for that little boy. I said, your son is amazing. Your son is awesome. And I would love to go jump on the trampoline with him again. And she's like, girl, I would love to have him bounce around the house and destroy my house. Anything but what's going on right now. And, you know, it's in God's hands. God is in control. And I'm just going to let God be the star of the show. But that doesn't mean that I'm not going to pray and I'm not going to ask for prayers. Because we are called to be prayer warriors. Prayer is one of the most powerful things that we have been given. Prayer can move mountains. And I'm just, right now... It's all in God's hands. So, another prayer request that I need is for my brother-in-law, Jeremy. Oh, Lord. So, he was inside of my sister-in-law's house, which is his sister, Marissa. And, um, they were, they were all inside the house, and it was late, and a drunk who was, they, they said he was drunk, but he was also on some kind of substance. Um, he had a crack pipe and they're still running tests and doing all that to figure out exactly what this guy was on and the insurance won't do anything. Like he, this guy totaled my brother-in-law's truck. The insurance won't do anything until they have an itemized detail report. The police said that will take 10 days. So my brother-in-law is without a vehicle for 10 days and we're trying to figure that out. Shelby, <laughs> I am so sorry. She's a crazy one. But, <laughs> but anyways, um, but I'm just glad that nobody was hurt in that situation. Um, I'm just going to ask for prayers for my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law went on a rampage and she admitted to a lot of things that we suspected all along. Um, it's a long story. I really do not want to get into it because it is, it's a very um, personal, in-depth story that I do not feel comfortable telling people at the moment, but um, me and my husband have decided that we, we have officially cut my mother-in-law out of our lives because it's just too Every time we're around her, it's like walking on eggshells, and it's just incredibly toxic. And it, it, believe me, this decision to cut her out did not come lightly, but I just believe that 
perfect timing is always in God's hands. And just because I have cut my mother-in-law out of my life does not mean that I'm not going to ask people to pray for her. Because as long as you are still breathing and you're in the age of grace, I believe there is hope for your salvation. There is hope for you to, to change. There, there's hope for God to grab a hold of you and mold you and make you into the person that he has called you to be. I believe in that 100% without a doubt in my mind. But you also have to be a willing vessel to allow the Lord to do what he needs to do in your life. And this is how I love with the love of Jesus and not the world. Because the world says if you love somebody, you have to tolerate them. And the Bible says something completely different. And if I am willing to pray for that person and I want to see them in heaven, that means I love the person with the love of Jesus. And I know the world does not understand it's that kind of love. But sometimes you do have to make the hard decision to cut the toxic out of your life so that you can draw closer to Jesus. Um, I heard somebody say this and I'm like, yes, that is so, so true. The closer you go and draw to Jesus, the smaller your circle of people that surround you become. Because... When you draw closer to Jesus, you have to cut the world out. And the world, the, you will notice the people who are worldly tend to fall out of your life. Or they become less frequent in your life. You notice that, that, that the world and the love of the world and the things of the world decrease in your life and Jesus increases and you know what I I love that I can love like Jesus loves I love the fact that no matter how much somebody has hurt me and I can say well I still want them to go to heaven God, please touch them. God, please be with them. Because when you cut out what the world says love is, and you actually start leaning on what the word of God says love is, you see things in your life change so much. Like I said in one of my... Okay, I guess you do not know what a stop sign is. Luckily, I know what a stop sign is, dude. <laughs> Sorry. It was my turn to go, and luckily I was paying attention. I swear. I, on it, okay, I'm not a swearing. Sorry, I even said it that way. But I have noticed something. People have become more road ragey. People look at a stop sign and go... It's just a suggestion. People are looking at stoplights and they're getting angry. The anger in the world, it, it's like, it's different than it used to be. It's not the same as it used to be. And I just can look at the world and I just see it spiraling down. It's The world is on a downward spiral. And I was watching a video of, it's a person that covers all the New York, I, I put it on my uh, community page, but he was talking about the crime and I was listening with the ears, like before I, before I watched the video, I said, God, give me your ears, give me your eyes, let me let me have understanding about what's going on. And when I actually looked from a, bu a biblical standpoint about the crime rates and different things and what's really going on in New York, 
and within going on within California. Hey, if they, they don't want to hear you huff and puff in their ear, my little psycho. But, and I was listening, and I'm sitting here going, this is all part of the set up for the mark of the beast in the seven years of tribulation. Because the, guy, the things that this guy was speaking of, I just heard... Track because they were talking about tracking merchandise and how to how to like um, bring crime rate down and what technologies can we put into place and just little key words and I felt the Holy Spirit through that video just say it's all a part of bringing of how they're going to implement the mark of the beast. It, this is building up reasons. They're putting together reasons to have the mark of the beast. Because you will not be able to buy, sell, trade unless you have the mark of the beast after the rapture in the seven years of tribulation. Because... The, the world has to be in chaos and in a downward spiral because it says that the Antichrist will bring a false hope and false peace. And we see that this world that we live in is um, it, it's in pure chaos. And it just keeps getting worse. It, it seems like it keeps, keeps getting worse by the hour. It's not getting worse by the day anymore. It's getting worse by the hour. And it looks like the world is truly just falling apart. Shivers. But... It's all falling into place for the rise of the Antichrist. That means we're going home soon. Be ready. The signs are all around us. They don't want to hear. I'm so sorry about my dog. But guys, the signs are all around us. Just open your eyes and open your ears. And ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. Alright, well, I'm going to get off here. Hope you guys have a great day. How many times do I need to freak the hat? I mean, I don't know if y'all can see that fur, but she... I just de-shedded her, and she's already a fleur fluff. Alright, bye guys.